Carrie Byron, Agricultural Resource Specialist with Beaver Watershed Alliance. Here at the Alliance, we work to protect, enhance, and sustain the water quality of Beaver Lake and its entire watershed. This project does exactly that. Sediment is the number one pollutant to Beaver Lake, and by restoring this stream bank, we are reducing the amount of sediment that moves downstream and eventually into Beaver Lake. Next, we'll hear from an expert who designed and constructed the project, and you'll get a first-hand look at behind the scenes on how this project was done. Hello, my name is Sandy Formica. I'm the Executive Director of the Watershed Conservation Resource Center, and we are here today at a small stream restoration project in the West Fork of the White River watershed. And this project is part of a larger NRCS, RCPP uh, program a USDA uh, program and we have 14 partners that includes Beaver Watershed Alliance, Beaver Water District, the NRCS of course, and uh, the Walton Family Foundation and many more. This is a small um, 2.3 square mile stream. It's an unnamed tributary that flows directly to the West Fork of the White River and we are on um, a landowner's property and she's going to talk to you about the project later but basically we had um, severe stream bank erosion uh, through the site that was eroding away her uh, pasture and we came in and we did a natural channel um, design restoration so one reason why a landowner might want to do a project like this is because every year thousands of tons of sediment are going into our watersheds from stream instability and the resulting stream bank erosion and that was the case with Carolyn Griffith and she was losing both pasture and mature riparian forest and I'll show you those areas um, when we start looking at the project so um, there are several reasons you would want to do this. One is to reduce your land loss due to erosion. Another one is to reduce sediment and also the nutrients that come along with that sediment uh, to your watershed. Specifically, we're in Beaver Lake watershed here, so that helps to protect our drinking water source for Northwest Arkansas. And then another reason would be um, to create wildlife habitat and aquatic habitat. And as we go through the project, I'll show you examples of that. Next, we'll hear from the landowner who was absolutely thrilled with how this project turned out. You'll get to hear it in her own words. This project has changed my life. It is a wonderful place for the animals. It's a wonderful place for my friends to come down and meditate. Whenever we're sad, the sound the beauty of this heals. Not only does it take care of my pasture, but I've had huge amounts of fun watching various plants grow. They put down some pawpaws and beautyberries and all sorts of native plants. I'm particularly interested in uh, butterflies, so uh, I just have a great time coming here being here. Well, hundreds of years ago, this was known as Jones Creek because that was the original pioneer. And now only the old people who have lived here for years call it that. About 200,000 acres drain into this and part of the West Fork. Everything from the top of 170 Half of it drop goes down to Devil's Den and the other half comes through here. It goes through Jones Creek to Dyes Creek to the West Fork of the White River and then into Beaver River. So having this clean is uh, an important part for all of us. I got interested in this project when Sandy mentioned it, but I thought when she was talking about it, I didn't have a clue about what they really meant. Then I got to go to Marion and Carolyn Kreider's place and I saw what they had done. Totally changed my mind. I did not have any idea about all the engineering there and the little six 
inches of draw and all the all the planning that went in here. This has made a huge difference just in the amount of land I lose. And I could not be happy. And we did a restoration here using natural channel design principles and we utilized EQIP for the funding and then some of our other funding available through our RCPP project. So we're on the upstream end and um, the project includes um, three riffle areas and two pool areas. So it is a small stream restoration. As you heard from Carolyn, she was really concerned about us destroying the uh, native vegetation that was already here. And so we were careful to minimize how much excavation we did. So for that reason, we do have sort of a tow wood rock tow combo um, bench that we created in the woods here. Because we're so incised and detached from the floodplain, we went ahead and put two layers of rock. And then we have a bio block here that creates a soil mattress all the way through here where we could plant native vegetation. And um, you can see we planted vegetation between the rocks. We've got um, silky dogwood, witch hazel. This is a willow stake. And, and then this whole bank is planted um, with several hundred uh, native species of plants. Also put out native seed and wildflower. If you're wondering what this grass is, um, it's what we put on all of our projects initially to get some kind of cover to help reduce that initial, uh, those initial floods that come through the erosion. And this is just a nursery crop grass. In this case, it was winter wheat. In the summer, you might um, use a millet um, or oats. And this pool goes to a grade control structure, and we'll go down there and look at that. But that first grade control structure keeps the water elevation, keeps the wood wet on the pool, and keeps the wood wet. And we made this about a little over half a foot deeper than it was um, before we did any work here to create more habitat for the fisheries. And then um, upstream of here, we rebuilt the riffle uh, that comes into the uh, pool. So behind me is three great control structures and anytime you're doing a stream restoration project you need to think about how the water is going to flow through the project based on the elevation of the channel. And so you can see the pool that I was just talking about behind me is at a higher elevation than the pool that I'm standing uh, beside. And those three uh, structures in between the two poles is how we drop the elevation down in a way that's going to remain stable through a big flood. And um, you might be like, well, why didn't you save money and just build one structure? And the reason why we didn't is you want to ensure that you have fish passage through your ripples and where you do have your grade control. So um, we estimated about a half a foot drop Obviously, we've got one more, uh, we've got one drop higher than two of the other ones, and that, that's fine too. Um, in nature, there's usually a lot of variability. Okay, so we're at the second downstream pool, and um, behind me, you can see the other stream bank. Uh, this, was, this was a pretty severe cut bank, and it was actually taking out mature riparian forest. A lot of times we use um, tow, a tow wood design for this type of restoration, but you need at least 25 feet. So we did a rock tow for the bench. There are sills that go back in there. It's very easy for an eroding stream to cut around a rock tow. So we were very careful in how we designed this and constructed it. There's also a viburnum upstream that's overhanging from the original, where you can still see some of the original cut bank. We left it alone. Okay, we're on the downstream end of the project. And as you can see behind me, that the, the pool elevation, we had to use three structures to drop it down. You can see this elevation is lower. So you can 
gives you two of the structures, there's another one in the foreground. We made that pool elevation about a foot higher than what was here previously, and that was in hopes of um, keeping the water here all year round through the summer and, um, and to improve the fish habitat. And the, that, that first structure keeps the water um, elevation, it sets the water elevation. And then you can also see that our structures are doing a really good job of aerating the water and that there's a lot of diversity in um, how the water flows over them. Once again, the fish uh, love that and it also helps to uh, keep the oxygen levels in the water high. For this spoon, I mean, it had some nice qualities, but it had these big old cut banks. And um, now people want to come down and enjoy this resource. So I just want to remind everybody we used EQIP funding to pay for about 75% of this project and then we used um, other funding we had through our RCPP to, to pay for the rest of it and we used natural channel design principles to restore this small section of Jones Creek. Beaver Watershed Alliance works directly with landowners to address their erosion and stormwater management concerns, help those who want to become better stewards of their land, and work with farmers to increase the productivity of their property. If you're interested in us coming out for a free site visit, contact us today. We can help work with you and see your property and then give some recommendations on the best management practices that you can implement to help preserve water quality on your land.